somebody was ill in the present, you can imagine that any form of illness will, will travel a certain probabilistic path in the future. It'll get worse, it'll get better. It's a whole range of probabilities. What this suggests is that if you were to do a strong intentional prayer for somebody backwards in time to when they first became ill, could you help them move into a probabilistic future where they got better quicker? Than, than if they were not prayed for? And the answer is yes. And so there are experiments that are kind of like that and they, they suggest the answer is yes. They're called completely outrageous, both by the people who do the experiments and of course by anybody who's reading the experiments because it sounds crazy. And yet we know even from these laboratory studies that something like that seems to be possible. That whatever intention is doing, it does not seem to be locked into ordinary space time just like any other psychic phenomena. It's somehow outside of space time. Amazing. Great. We've got several questions on how does this work from Ed, from Evan, from a few other who, others who are asking, what's your best guess regarding the underlying physical or non-physical physical mechanisms of these anomalous effects? So maybe you could speak a little bit to that. Okay, so let me, let me go back to my slides because I figured somebody was gonna ask that. Okay, so how, how does all this work? Well, the truth is that nobody knows how it works, but I have a guess as to how it works. So in order to understand how anything works, we're talking about the worldview that you're, you're looking at. So we're talking about the scientific worldview. What is that? It's materialism. So these are some of the phrases that are used when talking about these sorts of things. You are a machine made of meat. Your sense of self is an illusion generated by your brain. This is, these are standard neuroscience. And it comes about because the, the scientific worldview is essentially this. It's a, a hierarchy of different disciplines where physics is assumed to be at the bottom. Uh, matter and energy is fundamental. And from that emerges what we know as chemistry and then biology and psychology. And somehow consciousness, which you can think of as your sense of awareness, self-awareness, awareness in general, it emerges out of all of this. So. This means that consciousness has to be composed in some way of organizations of matter and energy. It's being produced by the brain. From this perspective, ideas about manifestation, this, these are impossible because how would something going on in your consciousness not only affect everything going down on this hierarchy, and we know psychology and consciousness are related and biology too, but chemistry and physics, maybe within your body, but what about outside of your body, right? An affirmation about something in the world, this is impossible. So that means that given that there's a fair amount of evidence that somehow consciousness is able to do this and there's something missing about the idea of materialism. So it is a very popular thing because materialism is very effective. It's been extremely effective in bringing us out of the out of medieval times into the way that we understand the world today. So we cannot throw it away, but something's missing because we also know that these other phenomena, affirmations and psychic phenomena, they're real. So one way that I've looked at this is to, to go back in history to find other worldviews because the scientific worldview is, is quite good, uh, but it's only been around about 400 years. So what about 10,000 years? Well, it's shamanism. And then uh, more formalized ways of thinking about the esoteric worldviews in Hermeticism and Neoplatonism, the Kabbalah, alchemy, Gnosticism, and from the East, yoga, the Vedas, Buddhism, and so on. So the, one of the uh, early synthesis of these kinds of different philosophies was the perennial philosophy by Aldous Huxley. And he basically said, it's this, it's consciousness is fundamental. And the philosopher would say this is the, the, the idea of idealism, that consciousness is fundamental, which means more fundamental than the physical world. So we go back to our hierarchy for idealism and we just do one thing. We change where we think consciousness comes from. And in, in this view, things like psychic phenomena and manifestation and all the magic, they're, they're easy to understand. And it also then allows us to understand that materialism is a special case of the world at large. 
So physics, chemistry, biology, and psychology are not gonna change. These are all perfectly good. Neuroscience is too, but it's not the whole thing. It's a piece of the whole, which is what science has been doing from the very beginning. It comes up with an idea about how things work and then it expands a little bit. We saw that, oh, classical physics is actually a subset of quantum mechanics and relativity. And so this is not a radical proposal. It simply says that something about awareness is primordial, it's fundamental, and from it emerges the world as we experience it. That being the case, then your consciousness is primary over physics. It's over ideas of space and time, it's over energy, it's over matter. It can make things happen as a result. And this one is then pointing out again about the, the uh, special case idea. So here's classical physics. Lots of things have been learned in it. Lots of our world is based on it. But relativity is quite different. So this is the world of kind of the world of the everyday. Relativity is the world of the very large, high gravity. Quantum mechanics, again, is very different. In fact, we still don't know how to stick quantum physics and relativity together, which is why the domains are quite separate. But this is the world of the microscopic, uh, super cold, and, and several other things. Uh, and then we, we have philosophy, which is trying to get a, a handle on how do we understand these things from a fundamental set of assumptions, huge chasm of ignorance, things that we don't know about yet, like what's dark matter in the future. There's dark energy, dark matter, quantum gravity, lots and lots of other things. So as science advances, it keeps saying that what we used to think was fundamental, like classical physics, really isn't. The moment you start stepping out in other domains, it gets stranger and stranger. And now we see that at the leading edge of science, both in, in physics, mechanics, and mathematics, and in the neurosciences, we're getting thought leaders saying things that would have been thought crazy 30 years ago. Namely, as Christoph Koch says, a famous neuroscientist, I believe that consciousness is a fundamental and elementary property of living matter. It can't be derived from anything else. Well, these are now, you're seeing these as mainstream books, many of them being published by academic presses. So the, this is now an idea that, uh, which is, has been said by the esoteric traditions for many years. Consciousness seems to be fundamental. And if that is true, then suddenly ideas like your affirmations or consciousness imposing itself onto the world, making the world change, as in destiny engineering, it's, it's still not seen as something that's gonna happen all the time to everyone, willy-nilly, but it is a plausible way of thinking about what's actually happening. 